Hey guys, in this demonstration video, what I'd like to do is show you how to weld the 50% overlaps. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you up here on the board how things are going to kind of lay out. We'll talk a little bit about theory, and then I'm going to get out there and I'm going to show you how to do it. So, the first thing, we got our base metal here. We're going to have a stringer bead. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to weld the stringer bead just like what we did in the last module. This one will be bead number one. The reason I say bead number one is because I want five to six beads in a row going down a plate. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to be, we're going to weld a bead right about here. If this, if this marker was my, uh, my welding rod, I'm going to put a bead right here. What the goal is, is that this bead will cut 50% overlap bead number one. So this one will come bead number two. I'm going to do the same thing. With the next bead, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna to try to put it right here, which should create a little bit of a bead number three. Now bead number four is gonna be the same thing. We're just gonna keep building on. Number four, and then bead number five. All I'm doing is I'm welding at the toes of the bead, the previous bead to get where I want. Now if you guys don't know where the toe is, the toe is where the weld and the me base metal come together. Sometimes I do a little bit of a, a angle away from the bead and it kind of creates that, it kind of shoves the other bead up on it. But for the most part, I'm just welding a stringer bead right at that toe and it usually comes out every time. What we're trying to get is we don't want to have any valleys from in here, here, here. We're trying to create a nice flat surface all the way across. This, the purpose of this weld is actually to either be machined back off or to fill a gap so a base metal can be put to it. We used it on this shaft. You want to take a look at it just a little while ago. We later machined off that, uh, those welds and used that shaft to remount bearings. So now that we kind of know where we're going to put the beads, let's get out there and let's weld one. So I'm going to go ahead and narrow it from here on out. Now this first bead is literally just a stringer bead like you've been doing. There's no difference. Just try to make sure that you keep a nice straight line because the rest of your 50% uh, overlap is going to be based off of this one single stringer bead. If you uh, need to draw a line or something like that to follow with this bead, that's more than fine. So here's my finished bead. You can see I just kept it nice and straight. Tried to, I actually used that top corner to kind of follow. Now with bead number two, we're pretty much going to aim the rod right at the toe of that stringer bead. And we're going to let the, the puddle kind of roll up on top. We're going to kind of watch it a little bit, but for the most part, if you're aimed right here and you have a nice little bit of an angle towards that uh, stringer bead, it should lay in quite nice. Maybe you'll have to practice a few times, but it should be good. So here's my uh, bead. They wanted me to show you that the slag had uh, fallen off quite easily. You could pick it right off. Um, you can see that there's no valley in between my two beads, and it's kind of one consistent dome right now. Now, bead number three is pretty much, we're going to repeat the same process. Again, see that I have a little bit of an angle going into the beads. Um, really, that's just to kind of cause it to lay up over top of that, um, that bead before it. Now we have my completed beads. You can see that the top is nice and flat, but I do have a little bit of a wobble in that third bead. So you just got to be careful not to let this happen um, and just weld over it as if it's not there. Now bead number four, I, like I said, I'm going to weld over that little bit of a whoop D in there. Um, more than likely yours might be a little bit worse. That one was pretty mild for the most part, um, but just try to keep all your beads consistently straight. If you start to notice that one side is a little tighter than the other, you can go ahead and kind of add more to that side to let it start filling in. Now my completed four beads are starting to look nice and flat across the top. It's going to be perfect for machining or for uh, putting up a plate or something like that. They, they are coming out pretty nice. No valleys at all. Now bead number five, this has been all just me repeating the same process over and over again. So not too much commentary here. Just make sure that in between each one of these beads, you're taking the time to really clean off the bead before it. That way you're not welding over any slag and getting any slag inclusions. Um, spend the time, a quick wire wheel or wire brush, chipping hammer, things like that go a long way. 
I'm also cooling it here and there. Now, here's my completed beads. This is what yours should look like when you're all done. Uh, nice flat across the top, no valleys at all. Um, but that's pretty much it. If there's anything I can do or any tips you, I can give you, please let me know. I'd love to help.